This review is about The Natural by Bernard Malamud. Yep, this is a movie copy. I'm going to get into that as we discuss this book. I got this movie tie-in copy from a friend of mine as a birthday present. He said he loved the movie and he had not read the book since he was a teenager. Uh, I told him I'd bump it to the top of my book reading queue as a way of cleansing my reading palette of all the fantasy I'd been reading lately. After reading this book, I have no idea why they would make a movie tie-in book. It would be like publishing the original Ninja Turtles comics as a tie-in to the most recent movie. I need to start with a warning that this review is going to contain some spoilers. It's not going to be anything major, but I really want to dig into this book, and to do that, I've got to spoil a few things. And honestly, it might help anyone that's going to read this book after watching this review. The teaser on the back makes no sense after reading this book. Check this out. A natural champ. He's an instant American hero, a born winner with the whole dream going for him. The game he loves and the woman he thought he'd lost. But he's up against the corruptors, the seducers, the glory destroyers, and he's fighting to win the toughest game of his life, staying on top. This isn't really a spoiler because it's not in the book. There is no woman he lost in this book. I'm almost positive that this is just a description for the movie and not for the book. Not to mention, the end of this book has nothing to do with staying on top. I think that's also another movie thing. I was not ready for what I got when I cracked open this book. I was expecting something along the lines of the movie. I've not watched the movie start to finish, but I've seen bits and pieces over my lifetime, and I did watch the episode of The Simpsons that satirized the movie, which I think counts. Well, it is nothing like the movie, other than the main character being named Roy, and they're playing baseball. This review is going to be a little sporadic because, uh, this book is sporadic. Sometimes it feels like the writing is poorly done, and at other times it feels masterful. The entire time I was reading the book, I felt compelled to keep reading. I started the book before bed one night, and I crushed 70 pages of it before I realized I needed to go to sleep so I could function at work the next day. He uses a lot of slang and colloquialisms from the 1940s and 50s that just read like gibberish to me. Stuff like this is one of those elements of popular fiction from the era that makes reading it now pretty frustrating. Some bizarre things happen all the time in this book. Two people died on screen in the first third of the book. I mean, both were very sudden and unexpected. Well, I say they were unexpected, but the first character to die was his mentor, which is a pretty generic trope. There's a borderline non-consensual sex scene in the first half of the book, which is pretty gross. It's like the are all nerds as good as you scene from Revenge of the Nerds. Oof, talk about something that didn't age well. Oh, and the reason he can't play baseball in his prime is because a mentally unstable woman shot him with Chekhov's gun. You'll know what I'm talking about when you read the book. It's another one of those poor writing tropes. Malamud jumps from one character's point of view to another mid-page and then jumps back two paragraphs later. Throughout the book, I would stop mid-paragraph and start the page over or go back to the previous page to make sure I knew what was going on. There's a scene early on where Roy accepts a challenge from a former MVP. Roy starts throwing heaters past the experienced ball player, and you get to see from Roy's POV and from the veteran player's POV. In Roy's head, he's thinking about how bad he wants to show up this ball player, and the MVP side, you see a man realizing he's past his prime, and he's desperately trying to hold on to the dream that Roy is just beginning to chase. I would say that it's a passage that shows Malamud's strengths as a writer, but it was written so poorly that it was hard to keep track of whose head I was in. I had to read it twice. It was a great idea with poor execution. It often reads like the POV character has schizophrenia. I felt like half the time I couldn't trust what I was seeing as I was reading the book. Just weird stuff happening that I think is an attempt to represent the character's thoughts or as a dream sequence. He doesn't let you know the character is dreaming. I'm not even sure if they were dream sequences. Here's a good example. About halfway through the book, there's a scene where Roy, the main character, is at a steakhouse with a reporter. Memo, the woman he has a crush on, and a creepy bookie that Memo hangs out with. The scene starts with Roy being the odd man out, something like DiCaprio in the Titanic scene where he's at dinner with all the fancy people. And then it develops into... Roy showing up the bookie by doing magic tricks or something after he lost a bunch of money betting on what people would order at the bar. 
it felt like a bad dream sequence that was so bizarre. I just skimmed the last couple pages of it. Then toward the end of the book, Memo mentions the magic tricks. And I thought, wait, that seems real. I thought it was a dream. What is going on? Then we get a scene where Roy is riding in a car with Memo in the middle of the night. And she starts driving like a bat out of hell as she tells Roy they're being followed. At one point, Roy thinks he sees a little boy and a dog in the road. And then he feels a thump thump of the car driving over something. When he asks Memo, she says there was nothing in the road, but she is also acting like a maniac, so Roy doesn't believe her. Eventually, he takes over the wheel and doubles back and never finds any evidence that they ran over something. Uh, he spends the rest of the book thinking about whether or not they ran over a kid. It is by far the most bizarre book I have ever read. I have no idea how it became a movie that was so different. I don't know how you read this and think, you know what, we're going to make a feel-good story about the golden era of baseball. The book doesn't end in the last chunk of the book. It's more of like an epilogue, which I'm going to discuss. But the ending itself is very confusing. I had to read it twice just to know what was going on. And the very end of the book is incredibly grim. There are a few things from the ending I want to talk about, just so I have more examples of how bizarre the book is. Roy storms up to a room with some people in it, and he knocks one man out, throws another onto a table, and punches him in the back, and makes him squeal until he literally craps his pants. Then he's grazed by a bullet and stops a woman from turning the gun on herself. All of his actions are justified, but the scene was still incredibly odd. Then he walks down into the street uh, with his baseball life over. A child comes up to him and asks him about the events at the end of the book, and Roy just starts weeping. I think that the overall theme that the book's going for is the destructive nature of chasing your dreams no matter the cost. But it's heavy-handed at some points, and then you really don't get anything out of some passages, and you're left digging through them like, what am I supposed to get out of this? And there's nothing there. Oh, and I forgot to mention, he has another lover that seems like a really wonderful woman that really helped him turn his baseball season around by believing in him when no one else would. He totally shuns her after they meet and have sex on the shore of Lake Michigan because she admits that she became a mother at a young age and that her daughter had a child at a young age as well. He's disgusted that he banged a grandma who is in her mid-30s. I think she is supposed to be a representation of what his life could be if he wasn't ruining his life chasing his dreams. Roy looks to her as a safe place that is stable and believes in him, but she has baggage and he can't cope with that, so he goes for the unstable woman that is more destructive than he is. I finished the book in record time, and I've spent a few weeks thinking about it since I finished reading it. I still have no idea how I feel about this book. I can't tell if it's a terrible book written by someone known for writing works of art that you can really chew on. Uh, more about that in a little while. Or if it is a work of genius I am too dumb to understand. I brought it up in a book group I'm in on Facebook and I had an even split between I love the book, it is pure genius, and I hated it, it doesn't make any sense. Both sides had valid points and the discussion was great, but it didn't help me at all. While I was looking for a way to make this book make sense, I found out there's a Cliff Notes dedicated to the book. My first thought was, well, that makes total sense. This book is incomprehensible. Then I thought, well, if it has Cliff Notes dedicated to it, I might just be too dumb to understand the book. So I dove into what I could read for free on the Cliff Notes website, and it didn't convince me that I was missing anything. I think the book is just poorly written. Does it have a theme that you can think about for weeks after reading it? Yes. Is it written in a compelling way that forces you to keep reading? Also, yes. Would I recommend it to anyone? Maybe? I guess I can talk about his other book I teased above, The Assistant. I heard about it in the book group comments when I was giving an early scathing review of The Natural. Someone said it was his best novel, so I read the summary. It blew my mind. It seems like it is absolutely amazing. I mean, even if he can execute like a third of what it seems like he's doing in the book, It'll be outstanding. I don't think I've ever been more intrigued by a normal fiction novel. So when I read it, I promise you I will make a review. I don't know what else to say about this book. It is poorly and masterfully written. The themes are intense and at the same point incoherent. The characters are off-putting and compelling. And the prose is beautiful and unreadable. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've read the book, I give you my condolences. 
please let me know your thoughts in the comments. And with that, I'm out of here. I'll see you next time.